Hey guys, Micah from Micah Doodles here. Hey, uh, just wanted to um, go over a quick tutorial with you guys. Um, today we're going to be um, inking a drawing. And one of the things sometimes I get from some people is they're, is they're after they finish their sketch, this is an Audi, uh, rough, the cartooned out Audi that I did um, here. And so what I'm going to do with this is sometimes people are afraid to ink a drawing after they've penciled it in. They've spent a lot of time doing it. They they like how it looks, but then they're kind of a little bit timid when it comes to, to laying down the ink. And so today I'm going to kind of give you a little example of what you can do if you're at this spot right now. So what I did is the best thing to do that I found um, to kind of build up your confidence is uh, make a photocopy of actually your original artwork. So after you make the photocopy, I've kind of got two copies here I'm gonna work with. One that's kind of light, and one that's kind of semi-lighter, semi, semi, semi -lighter, I guess, and then a lighter one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically take my lighter drawing here, and I'm gonna begin to ink it. And so for this color, um, do you guys have any suggestions on the color that I should actually color in this car? I'll wait. A little bit. I, I was I was thinking about doing this green, but if you guys have a different color that you'd like me to do, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. Red. Um, I could do red, but actually, I'm almost I'm almost dead on that color. So, matte black, matte black. Um, I'm not going to do black. Sorry, because I've got I'm limited on my colors. All right, guys. Well, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to do a green real quick just to give you a quick tutorial on this thing. So basically what I do, many of you guys know, if you follow me, what I do is I start out and I um, basically hit, hit, hit my tires black. I'm going to kick those out right now. So all my black areas, I'm just going to go. Now I don't have a vehicle in front of me as a one that I'm um, copying and looking at. So I'm just kind of going out off my memory. I'm going to take whatever's here and I'm going to begin to, to darken this in. So here we go. I always hit my wheels first. Um, now on this one, this car's in motion, so um, the actual spokes on the wheel aren't really going to be visible. But um, I could actually do one where I, I ink them in and show you guys how to do chrome if that's something that you might be interested in as well. But for this one, I'm just going to lay it down real quick to give you an idea. Now, some people actually, they uh, rather than doing a pencil, as soon as they're done with their pencil, they'll actually ink it in. And when it's all inked in, uh, then you're going to have, obviously, hard black lines. That's even a better way um, to ink in, ink in with markers because then you don't have to go over it. With a pencil, I'm going to have to go over it again with ink when I'm done um, to highlight these lines so they're not pencil. So, um, again, I'm going to be using a PM141 and um, a PM... 48. I use these uh, for chrome. I use these for lights, any type of uh, window reflection, things like that. So right now I'm going to basically kind of just uh, ink in my lights a little bit, kind of add a little bit of dimension here. This room's going to be chrome, so I'm just touching up some areas here. I'm going to go ahead and just darken this one, this spot in here as well. Hopefully my black pen's not going to die on me. That's why I didn't want to do matte black because I'm I'm kind of kind of a stickler on my on my black colors. I don't have a lot right now to spare because I've kind of gone through them and with my last couple clients, uh, they've had some darker cars and I've used those blacks up, and so I'm kind of limited right there. So that's why I didn't do the black matte and then the red. I need to order another red. <laughs> I'm limited on that one too. So sorry guys. Um, I was either gonna maybe do a yellow Audi or a black. Um, sorry yellow Audi or a um, maybe a purple one or uh, let's see I was thinking about maybe a pink something different um, just to give you an idea because because really this is just going to be about value so I'm just going to kind of show you the value of how I'm going to be doing this so anyway from here um, I like to define my horizon again if you follow me um, you can get more details you can see more videos as well I'm going to be putting these up on YouTube as well. So in my cars, I always like to, to draw them out where they're leaning and they're slanting um, towards the left. Um, I kind of build them up high. For those of you who've seen my videos before, a lot of times what I do is I will draw the, the vehicle this way and then I'll kind of 
put it put it in, put it into an oval if you can see that and then i draw the front of the car middle of the car the back of the car and then basically use that as a rough idea of how I'm gonna place my vehicle inside. Because sometimes what happens is you can start on a vehicle here, but then run out of room because you went off the page. And so just some helpful hints that may help you as you were drawing your vehicles. So let's start here. Again, my window designs, and this is interesting. This typing paper that I'm using, that I photocopied this on, this really absorbs the ink. And so typically I don't use this type of paper when I, uh, when I ink my drawings. Um, I use more of a thicker Bristol board, a card stock, but it still gives a decent idea of what's going on. Okay, grab a few other spots here with this black. Now the tough thing is with black, as soon as you put it down, it's basically it's permanent. Um, so sometimes if I'm not sure where I want to have a dark area, I'll go over it with a lighter gray just to kind of uh, mess around like these, these um, uh, intakes right here. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. So because I don't have a picture, so I'm not really going to go dark. I am sure what's going on on this, in, on this intake for the back. So I'll just ink this one in real quick as well. All right. So let's just go from there. So Let's bust it. Let's bust this thing out. Okay. So my light source, I'm going to be coming from this side. So I know that most of these areas here are going to be lighter. So the side on this side of the car is obviously going to be darker, but, but the way that I do it, I, I went ahead and shoot it all green right now. I color it all basically green. Um, and I do it really rough. Kind of sloppy at first. Um, because sometimes what happens is if you were just to sit here and go like this slow, um, it's going to build up your color. And um, these pens are meant to go on in layers. And so what I like to do is I like to highlight and push on the certain spots, push down at certain spots where I know there's um, a contour, like especially on the side of the car. There's a contour here. Uh, there's going to be a contour um, up here as well on this wheel well. And then um, obviously on the edge of where this intake is, there's a contour. And so... We go from here, drop this guy down, bring this guy in here like this. And again, I'm just laying this on really kind of fast, really loose, um, but that's okay. Okay. Okay, this has got something with... Here, I can't quite sure. I think these intakes are whatever. Let's keep it like that. Okay. So now, um, side of my car is here. Build this up like that. There we go. Now you can see with this pen, um, what it does, if I go over it again, the pen's going to have a tendency to go down darker and then it's going to lighten up. So if I would take this area right here and I would go over it a couple times, it's going to start building up this color. It's going to start looking a little darker and that's kind of what I want. So my first pass on my ink is basically just to kind of lay down my, my rough color. I'll go back in and add the dimensions um, to it in a little bit later. Now I know that this intake is, is, is um, sticks out a little bit from the car, so I'm gonna leave this top part lighter than I do the rest of the car. Anytime you darken something up, it's gonna recede. So if you have a dark image next to a lighter image, the dark image is gonna have a tendency to, uh, to recede and to go back. So now here we see on this, I've got my light source coming in this way. Um, now I'm gonna start adding where um, I'm gonna have some darker areas. So now I'm gonna kinda go in and begin to think about where that light source um, is going to hit, what parts of the car. Um, some people are really good at reflections. Me, I, I'm still learning, but I think with this tutorial, this can probably just help you guys out anyway um, and, and help you advance in what you're doing. Again, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm not really looking at my phone, but I will glance over there every once in a while. Now on this hood, um, I'm going to darken these things up because this is basically kind of where it tags in like this. All right, so darken this guy up. Now with this hood, we're gonna have a little bit of fun here. We're gonna, I'm gonna basically take my pen 
and I'm going to just feather it out like this. Darken up certain spots here. So what I'm doing is I'm basically adding a little bit of dimension in there. Same thing with here. I'm going to feather it out like this. Okay, I'm not too worried about anything. I just kind of kind of let the pen do the motion like that. So basically I'm pulling up a light source that's coming off the top of, of this right here. If this light was coming in like this. Everything else on this side is definitely going to be darker. As well. Okay, you can kind of see all these colors. Remember, I laid this down first, and it was pretty heavy. It's still, it's not as dark as as um, I wanted it to be, because um, basically the pen goes on darker, but it definitely lightens up. So with this, I'm going to kind of add a little bit of extra shadow in here. All right, so I'm getting this out again. Okay, I'm going to go back in now that I have an idea of where things are. I'm going to start inking these things again. Putting in my window in here. Bring this thing in. Now, another way to do this too, if you have, um, rather than adding a complete solid black to the to any areas that are black, um, I have it. I like to use a darker gray, like a 114, um, because then I can layer that. As soon as I lay down a solid color black, I'm basically I only get one chance to layer it. So if I want to go any darker, I'm stuck there. Um, so what I'm going to do on this. I'm going to layer it in this black or this uh, 114 gray. That's going to help me uh, to be able, when I go back later on, to add some more depth to it. Now, again, I don't have the picture in front of me. I just have a rough sketch that I did. So the accuracy of this car isn't going to be completely, you know, there. But at least you're going to get an idea. The goal of this really is just an inking lesson. I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, roughly it's kind of like that. Same thing, I'm gonna take this gray, I'm gonna kind of go over some light areas here. Um, basically, on this, it's kind of like eyeshadow. You know, you add a little bit of black, it's gonna make those images pop out, just like on this. I added a little bit of this gray and it's gonna bring these, light, these lights out as well. Okay. I'm going to leave the highlight up there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you guys another trick as well. You can also take um, another gray, let's just say a PM109. As soon as you lay down your greens, if you're happy with those, that's okay. But you can also do this. You can take your gray shadows and you can begin to define those as well. I'll put my gray marker over the top of this, which will darken this up. Almost adds like a shadow as well. So then, basically, the the, the darker colors will stay back, the lighter colors will pop. It almost really gives it a defining edge. Um, and so I would do this on this type of car right here, defining where these areas were. I wouldn't touch the top of this this uh, this air intake because I want that to pop up. And then I'll just kind of tag. Another thing you can do is sometimes people have uh, horizon lines on their car where, where reflection goes. They would either trace that or kind of be loose with that. Um, that's another way to do that, to kind of make the image pop out a little bit more and then underneath here this is where my shadow would be so this basically is kind of like a, a shadowing technique there we go something like that I just basically use this to kind of outline a couple things and remember this is all going to lighten up so it looks like it goes on heavy but it's definitely going to lighten up um, and again I could go like this kind of add that to add a little bit of dimension to that as well. Okay, roughly. Now I know that this back here, this fin, um, is black. I'm going to leave it as such. So now, as I basically sketched in, I could, if I wanted to, go back and um, ink these lines in here. That's and that's what I'll do. Um, but what I normally like to do when I when I ink a car, as soon as I get it to to the basic shape, I always take my Sharpie marker, a dark one, and I outline the whole thing. It's just basically my type of style. But I like to um, outline it like this. It basically adds it adds a little bit more of a cartoon feel, and it really makes those um, edges stand out. It makes the car a lot bolder and a lot stronger. Um, just as a as an image as a whole. There we 
go. Roughly like that. You can see a big difference in that. Um, same is true when it comes to um, the inside of the wheel wells. I'll do the same thing. Bring that guy down like that. Okay. Okay. I also like to um, hit the side of my wheel wells basically with uh, a little bit of gray here. I, I can do the same thing in here. Say I was going to put a, um, a lip on here. Basically, I'm going to push down hard up here, and I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of stroke slowly down. And what this is going to do is fade. Um, it's just another way that you can uh, work with your pins and kind of have some freedom with that. But again, one of the key things is is um, it's good to have a piece of paper nearby that you can practice strokes, that you can practice how to do things, and you can practice watching how this color builds up. Now, again, guys, these pens aren't cheap. Um, Prismacolor sells these uh, premium markers. They run about um, close to $2.50, $3 a piece. So um, on this test, um, I've gone through um, t probably four boxes of grays in the past eight months. Um, gray markers being uh, cool grays, um, French grays, warm grays. I've gone through about four boxes of those. Those those run about 30 bucks a piece for 12 markers. And so um, with this, I've got some extra ones. That's why I'm kind of throwing down some color to teach this lesson. Uh, but for um, I want to save my colors for um, some jobs that I have coming up. But at least this will kind of give you an idea. So I can then go again um, and kind of add some highlights, touch up, you know, some things. Um, with me, my style is real loose. I don't, I don't like to always just stay in the lines and, and, and do things, um, you know, and color in very slowly. I like to be fast because sometimes what happens is I can end up um, finding uh, something that just actually works. Uh, pretty well because I've sketched it and I'm like, oh, that that's that's good. So anyway, this is kind of a rough idea of what this looks like. I also um, on this um, just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a spoke. I'm going to show you this. So if I have my center center cap here um, where my lug bolts are going, if I'm going to do a five spoke rim, what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to have a starting point for where I want that thing to go. Now everybody knows probably knows how to do a star. Simple, um, one, two, three, four, five. This is how you do a star, not a problem. But on, a, on an angled surface like this, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You have to figure out, is this star going to be concaved or is it going to be convex? Is, it going to, is the center of this going to be sunk in so that the rims are going to bow out like, like this? Or is it going to, you know, so this is, this is a little bit tricky. So on this one, I'm going to do a slight uh, concave on it. So I'm going to do my starting point. My starting point is going to be here. Okay, so now if that's the middle, I'm going to basically build off of this star. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five. So that would be basically where my points would, would be going on this five star. Okay, same thing with over here. I'm going to basically build it off. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've got my star. So now with this, I am going to actually take these things and turn these um, things into larger, larger spokes like this. So I use my middle line as a reference to how thick I want my spoke to be, and then I basically build my center line off of that. That makes sense. There we go, like that. Okay, now because you're seeing it from this angle. This is definitely going to have a little bit of a 3D effect on it as well. You're going to have to have show some dimension. Same thing. You can show some dimension on your sides um, as well. Okay. So now basically I've got that. Then what I do is I come in here and as soon as I know where my spike or my spokes are going, I'll begin to darken in the areas in between. Now I don't put calipers in there. Um, for my style, I typically just like the spoke to be shown and um, the wheel well because this is going to define for me um, I don't know. I just always do it this way and I think I, I like it better. I like to be able to see the shapes in between and this way really actually accents that and makes it look really cool. So you can kind of see these are all basically now just shapes. I haven't done anything, any detail inside of it, but yet this is without drawing a caliper in there. If I was to go in there and let's say I'm going to make, uh, um, gray rims or I'm going to do chrome rims. Um, again, if I was going to do this, I always lighten up after if I penciled something in, because when you do light grays, that pencil will show through and then you can't erase it. So on this, I'm going to use a 109. I'm going to use a 114 and 
I'm going to use um, some of my other colors as well. But I'm going to use a 109 for some of my light areas to figure out um, just to get some dimension in here first. And again, I'm going really rough on here. Um, figure out where I want my shadows to go as well. Kind of build off this. Again, now you notice that I didn't color in everything. I want to leave some of that white coming through. It's very important because then you're going to want to come through with some of your lighter blues and hit the tops of this because this is going to help add, give a little bit of a reflective surface on there. It's going to add a little bit of um, that chrome effect as well. So when you look at chrome, you've always got, um, you've got a horizon line. Your horizon line, um, everything, like say you were doing a bumper or something, you've got a bumper like this. You've always got a horizon line. The, this horizon line defines what happens above and below it. Okay, the below it typically is the images are going to be darker. It's going to be a darker gray. What happens above it, it's going to reflect the sky um, and, and, and white. Um, below it's going to reflect the um, ground and things like that, so it's going to be darker. So that's kind of how one way when you, when you begin to lay in chrome, one way that's kind of helpful to remember um, if you've ever wrestled with that, but again, take a piece of paper, take a bunch of photocopies of wheels and start, start adding to them, start, uh, messing around and seeing what you can come up with. So again, I'm going to take this, I'm going to do a rough on this one as well. Now this one, obviously, I didn't really take much time into it, so. Okay. Got it. All right. So roughly, now, I'm going to take my 114. This is the darker one. And I'm going to realize that um, if I, I'm going to kind of add the back sides of these things now, of where my rim would go in here. And then I'm going to come through later with another color make it stand out even more okay kind of give you an idea of what's going on here roughly like that um add some more blue up here things like that to kind of make it work um and then when I'm done, I take my Sharpie marker. I use a Sharpie like this. Um, and then I begin to go over and I begin to accent. Now, the Sharpie marker is basically what I call, it's kind of like when you put eyeliner on your eyes. Um, for those of you that are girls, they're going to make those things pop out. This is, this is a detail marker, which is going to make my lines on this car pop out. Because a Sharpie marker, um, I ink it, I lay it down last. I don't lay it down first because if you lay down this Sharpie marker and then you lay pen over the top, it's going to bleed. Um, there are some pens out there that won't do that, but for this lesson, this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to show you. I've already laid my stuff down, so now I'm going to begin to lay in my black lines. And these black lines are really going to start making this car come together. And again, I'm being a little sketch, sketchy on this. I'm not going super careful because um, I just want to show you guys. Um, if I was to do a client's car, obviously I'd be a little bit careful, but um, I don't use rulers. Um, it's just my style. Um, same thing with the wheels and things like that. I just all do it freehand. Now also another interesting thing is anytime that you're going to slope in your eyes, it's basically going to make it look a little bit more aggressive as well. And so even when I'm, when I'm cartooning or coming up with, with um, a car, I always like to slant it, but I also like to uh, just to kind of make it look um, aggressive as well. Okay, so I know that this Abby yeah, touches like that. Now this is the back side or the inside of this car here. Go up like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, it's not my hand's not too much in the way. I'm 
again, I could have probably added some more grays over here to make that thing pop out, but that's okay. On this fender, I want this fender to come through here like that. And I want to add a little bit of a lip on this fender as well. Um, and then where it comes down here, we'll do this. There we go. So something kind of like that. Um, then the tricky part is when I've got this intake back here, it's hard to begin because I, I can't see it. So I'm not being, there's probably some things going on that some of you guys are going, what? That doesn't go there. But hey, at least you get an idea here. Um, so on this Audi, let's add that. Let's start fine tuning everything. Um, I know it has a line that comes down here. Um, this goes through like that. Roughly, then I'm going to put a little fin on the back as well. Just like this. Okay. And obviously, I can touch up some areas. If I'm going to have to do ink, I'll go very carefully in here so it does not bleed. Um, but then that basically kind of gives you a rough idea. You could also, if you wanted to, um, take under here and add shape. I do some um, shadow. I do it with strokes, stroke lines. Sometimes that helps um, as well. It really de kind of depends on on how I'm feeling on, on the drawing. Um, okay, so basically that's the rough the rough of it so far. Let me hit here since that's at the angle. Okay, what I like to do on these is um, anytime that I'm going to be drawing a lip and it goes underneath it like this, I'm going to draw a little bit of a shadow that runs underneath. So I have a tendency to take a 116 and I'll run my shadow like this. So it runs underneath it like that. And what that does is it basically looks like the car is kind of getting sucked up into the fender. The wheel is getting sucked up into the fender. Okay, now I'm ready to go over what I had um, with my rims. So with this, this will kind of make things pop a little bit. Okay. Now again, I'm just guessing on these rims because I haven't done them before. So I'm just thinking of, I'm just messing around. So, but it'll just, it'll, it'll give you a basic idea of kind of what, what to do. You can take them and develop them farther. Okay. Roughly like that. Same thing is true in here. Shadow, darken that up down there because um, it kind of recedes. Um, again, everything's pretty rough in here. Okay, I'm going to go like that. I didn't add any blue in there. I'll do that a little later. Kind of gives you guys an idea. There you go. Again, I wouldn't do this normally, but I'm adding blue in here. I should have done that in the beginning, but I didn't do it yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, then I'm going to put my tread lines on here, like this. Okay. Roughly something like that. Then um, I'm going to go over it and... Um, actually, I could probably get away with doing this. I'm making that edge dark right there. To there. Okay, there we go. And you can kind of add some things if you figure out where you want your shadows to go. Again, I'd go back there and I would touch touch with this marker on some darker areas um, as well. Make that thing stand out. Okay, so roughly that's it. Then before I finish this thing out, just to show you guys, um, I got a white marker here. Yeah, it's a, a Molotow marker. And with that Molotow marker, I'm gonna basically hit some highlights on this car as well. Um, a lot of times I'll do the tire first, put the tread lines in there like this. Add my tread lines as well. Okay, roughly. Then I'm going to trace the outside of this wheel here, um, which is going to kind of give, an, give the perception of this rim as well. Okay. Put little accents on the, on the wheels here. 
Okay, now you can see in some of these areas here where this actually bled because the ink touched some of my lines. I don't want that to happen in an original drawing, so I'd be a lot more careful. Um, but again, um, one quick trick you can do is if you have a black, um, don't trace your white line directly over the top, but go to the right or to the left of it, like this right here. I'm going to go a little bit to the right of this line and draw it down, and then it actually just makes it makes it stand out a little bit more than if I would just than if I would have just traced over that line as a whole. Same thing with these things. I'm going to do that as well. Put this thing on here, and then with the window, sometimes I just kind of go loose through here as well and figure out where your highlights are. Now. That's kind of rough for this. Um, again, I would do a little better job if I had a little bit more time and I wasn't teaching this, but um, with these, now with a thicker, thicker paint pen, what I like to do is you add little dots and those are gonna be the little um, highlights and reflections that are gonna come off the sun so you kind of figure out where you want them at. Sometimes on Chrome, you're going to see those um, top of cars um, as well. And so on, on that, I can throw a little starburst on there or it's down here. Um, you know, do some fun little things. I like to trace these guys down like this as well. Sometimes people go, you know, go like this and, you know, add something around on the edge. You can do that with the lights. If there's something in the middle of the lights, you can add um, as well. And there's an interesting thing too. I like to do this is again, a little bit to the left of the black line. You can kind of add another type of dimension to these, to these wheels, even though you've already colored them in because it's going to add, the white is going to add like a sparkle or a shine on top of them. So sometimes it's kind of fun to you know, just, just have fun with it. Um, and a lot of this is I just kind of started learning on my own and developing it going from there. And then, and then I like to take this and I trace this inside here. Again, I'm a little bit to the right of that line. Basically making this stand out. Makes sense. There we go. So basically that's pretty much, I think, where I'm going to go. So there's an Audi R8. Um, hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions, you can follow me at... Uh, micadoodles.com or um, search for me, uh, follow me on Twitter or search for me on Instagram at uh, just search for micadoodles. Thanks.